First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three. Now, may the God of peace Himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete, without blame, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. A viewing audiences, in the last session, I told you about the spiritual meaning of the word flesh, creation, and the seed of life, along with brief introduction of the concept of spirit, soul, and body. Flesh is everything that is perishable, changing, or becomes extinct. I also told you that man was made in God's image and consists of spirit, soul, and body. God gave man seed of life and let them reproduce themselves through the seeds. This is the second session on the spirit, soul, and body, the first path. Let us learn what the Bible says about marriage and how a baby is conceived and grows in the womb. Today's message will become fundamental knowledge to help you understand how your self was made and shaped. Through today's message, I hope you will understand God's will and providence in creating and cultivating human beings and realize what you are so that you will follow God's pleasing will. Viewing audiences, some couples say when they get married, we met and married by the will of God. Wedding officiator often says, God has joined together this couple. Then do most couples meet by the will of God? It's not really so. Most of them chose their partner not because God appointed them as a couple, but because they are attracted to each other. But sometimes God appoints some couples. For example, a young believers ask God for their partner when they are to marry. If they pray for their partner by faith and leave it to God, God prepares their proper partner according to their faith and lets them get married. But there are few of this kind of couples. Suppose somebody is praying to God saying, God, I want this kind of spouse. He should have good college degree, his family should be like this, his appearance should be like that, and his character is like this. Then she meets a man like that by coincidence, but she says it was the answer of God. She decided everything on her own and says she received the answer. God's answer cannot be given like that. God's will for us is to trust Him and commit everything into His hands completely. It is not to decide everything on our own and then ask God. In most cases, they meet and break up as they like. Some say it is God's will for us to get married and to give birth to as many children as possible because God created Adam and Eve and blessed them to be fruitful and thrive. But the situation of Adam and Eve is completely different from today's situation. They had to give birth to as many children as they could because it was right after human history began. Also, Eden is so vast. Even after they were driven out to this earth, there was nobody on this earth, so they had to be fruitful. That is why they had their own rules of that time. At the time of Adam, they had to get married with brothers and sisters because there was nobody else. When Abraham 
uh, looked for his son Isaac's wife, he found somebody from his relatives, not from just any foreigner. What does the Bible say at the time of the Apostle Paul about 2,000 years ago? Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7, I wish that all men were as I am. He wished all men would be single like him. So he added in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 26, because of the present crisis, I think that it is good for you to remain as you are. Of course, these two verses do not mean that marriage is a sin before God. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 38 says, So then, he who marries the virgin does right. When you have a virgin daughter, and if you marry your daughter, you are doing right. But he who does not marry her does even better. It's better not to marry her. It's not wrong to get married, but it is better in the eyes of God not to marry. Why is it so? It is said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 34, and his interests are divided. An unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the affairs of this world, how she can please her husband. The mind of a man is also divided to please his wife. Unmarried men or women can receive greater spiritual blessings because they can be more faithful for the Lord than married men and women who are bound to their partners. Now, 2,000 years have passed since the time of the Apostle Paul and it is very near to the end time of the human cultivation. For this reason, we should deeply realize the meaning of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 26. Because of the present crisis, I think that it is good for you to remain as you are. Looking at these verses, we can realize that it is a wrong idea that God manages human marriage and appoints a spouse for each one. If you completely leave everything to God and receive the answer to your prayer, you may say you are marrying within the will of God. But if you just pray as you like, you cannot say God appointed your spouse. Nevertheless, Believers should ask God to guide their marriage when they want to get married. They should pray that God may let them meet a good partner so that they will encourage each other to be more faithful for God's kingdom and that they can share spiritual love with each other rather than losing their love for God or becoming lazy in God's works. If God really answers to your prayer, you will never have any quarrels, but you will have a beautiful spiritual family. You cannot even imagine a divorce. Viewing audiences, a new life is conceived through the combination of a sperm and an egg when a man and a woman marry and are united. A new baby is conceived when man's seed of life is sowed on the field of the woman, just as a seed is sowed on the land and bears fruit. If a baby is conceived in a womb, he grows for nine months and becomes a whole man. If you look into the conception and growth of a new baby, you can feel the mysterious providence of God the Creator. You may find this message a little difficult because professional terms are used, but you will be able to feel 
how mysterious and exquisite God's creation of life is. Uh, let's first look into the procedure of fertilization. When a sperm is combined with an egg, the egg is fertilized. A sperm consists of a head and a tail. You may think of a tadpole. It consists of a head and a tail. A sperm consists of a head and a tail. The head part has genetic factors with important data deciding what kind of baby will be conceived and the tail part has the strength to move the sperm to go to the egg. Of course, the actual distance is only about an inch, but for this minuscule sperm, it is quite a distance, and it swims with its tail. The head also has enzyme to break into the egg membrane when the sperm meets the egg. At one time, more than 300 million sperms enter the womb, and only one of them unites with an egg. If our sperm unites with the egg, high voltage electricity is generated and shocks other sperms. Let me repeat, more than 300 million sperms come out at one time. Among the 300 million, the strongest one arrives at the egg first. Then, high voltage electricity is generated at the egg membrane so that other sperms cannot approach it due to the shock. This way, no other sperm can approach the egg except the first one that reaches the egg and unites with it. At the same time, the egg membrane quickly thickens so that the other sperms will not pierce the membrane of the egg. God created everything very mysteriously so that all these things progress automatically. So from our head to toe, there are so many things that move automatically. The brain cells, the eyes, nose, tongue, inside the mouth, both ears, stomach and all entrails move automatically without any error. No matter how much science develops, we cannot make this kind of automatic system made by God. The heart pumps and the kidney refines the blood and sends it to the veins that can cover the earth many times if stretched out. All our body parts, bones, nerves, and all the cells move automatically from our head to toe. How amazing this is! The fertilized egg is divided into two in a day, into eight in two days, and into sixteen the next time. After eight days, the fertilized egg settles down on the uterus and begins to make completely different changes after two weeks. After three weeks, the heart begins to beat, and one week after that, the brain, spine, and nerve systems are made. After 12 weeks of fertilization, the height is about 5 centimeters, the weight is 30 grams, and the arm's length is 1 centimeter. Besides, fingerprints appear and all organs begin to be formed. The weight of the fetus in the uterus increases by 2 million times from when it is first fertilized. Its height and weight increase by 20 times every second. It can be called change in a blink. For the weight to increase by 20 times a second, 
there must be corresponding amount of cell division. And for the cell division to take place, there must be increase in number of DNA. There are 3 billion genetic data in one DNA. Suppose that DNA is a house and each genetic datum in it is a brick. Then cloning a DNA can be compared to building a house with 3 billion bricks. All the bricks order must be the same to that of the original house without a single brick missing. All of 300 million bricks must be linked together in the same order in less than a second and be positioned at the same place. Is it possible by coincidence? It is possible only with the power of the Almighty God. Accordingly, so many life scientists admit the existence of God the Creator because of these mysterious facts. Viewing audiences, the fetus nerve system begins to develop and its blood, bones, muscles, veins and internal organs begin to be formed after a month of its conception. After two months of conception, a baby's heart begins to beat and its head and limbs can be recognized because it begins to have body structure. After three months, its face is made and it begins to move its head, body and limbs. After four months, its organs that are necessary for sustaining life begin to work. Since five months, it begins to move more actively, moving muscles or checking the surroundings, and its hearing ability develops. In six months, its digestive organs develop and it grows faster than before. In seven months, hairs on the head grow and seminal glands enter the scrotum by sex hormone in case of a boy. In case of a girl, her sexual organ is completed in eight months. Uh, many people testify that the fetus was a girl, but they wanted a boy, so they received prayer and they had a son. Then when I think of the time, most of them received prayer before the eighth month. If it is a girl, her sexual organ is completed in eight months. In nine months, its hairs on the head become clear. A fluff of the body and wrinkles disappear and limbs become plump. In 10 months, it comes out of its mother's body with average height of 50 centimeters and uh, 3 kilograms of weight. So it should be at least 3 kilograms or 4 kilograms. Some parents tell me my baby is 4.2 kilograms. He is healthy and some other parents say 2.8 kilograms. 2.8 kilograms seems a little weak. Anyway, 3 kilogram is just right. Then when is the spirit given to the fetus? I already explained it in the sermon about hell. Do you remember it? It is in the sixth month after sperm and an egg are united that a spirit is given to the fetus. But you should not mistreat the life of a fetus at random 
only because its spirit is not given before the sixth month. The life of an unborn baby also belongs to God since the moment it is conceived and the authority of the life belongs to God only. After five months, the hearing organs are almost completed and closed eyes are opened as eyelids are formed. Wrinkles of brain activating the function of cerebrum are made from five to six months. Actually, the Bible shows that a six-month-old fetus responded to the work of the Holy Spirit. It says in Luke chapter 1 verses 41 to 44, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb lit for joy. Again it says, Blessed are you among women. It's because she had the Son of God, the Savior Jesus, in her womb. And blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. It says the baby in the womb is the Lord. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. When Mary, who had Jesus, visited Elizabeth, who had John the Baptist six months earlier, the six-month-old fetus John leaped with joy because it was filled with the Holy Spirit due to Jesus. How marvelous it was. In this way, unborn baby is already life and six month old fetus is a spiritual being who can be filled with the holy spirit you don't educate your children since they are born but since they are conceived especially after five months of your pregnancy viewing audiences an unborn baby grows up in the womb for nine months. The nine months are very important for the development of fetus body and formation of its character, personality, and intelligence. For example, unborn baby is supplied with what its mother eats and drinks. If mother eats or drinks something harmful or poisonous, or drinks liquor or smokes, all these things directly influence her baby in her womb. The baby will be severely damaged when mother takes medicines improperly or is exposed to harmful circumstances. In addition, whatever she thinks and feels during pregnancy influences her unborn baby. For this reason, since long ago, People considered prenatal care important and pregnant mothers are careful about her behaviors and they try to see, hear and think uprightly and properly. There are some newborn babies who were one month, 40 days or 50 days old and were dying but were revived by my prayers. When I meet them later, I see they recognize me. In one family, uh, they had a 40-day-old baby who was dying. They called me and I prayed for the baby on the phone. Then the baby revived. It was in the 80s. The baby revived immediately that I could hear the family members cheering of the phone. They were rejoicing. I visited their home once again later, and the child came before me and did a big bow, like when we do it to elders during feasts. That child looked like 
three to four years old. I was surprised and asked the parents. My visit was not pre-planned. There was an urgent matter in that family, so I went there in a hurry. So I asked the parents whether or not they told the child to greet me like that, but they said no. The child was doing it by himself. He was revived by my prayer when he was very young, and because his spirit knew it, he greeted me that way following the guidance of his spirit. I saw that kind of thing many times. There are some students who were revived by my prayer, and they greet me too. Viewing audiences, similarly, unborn baby is also affected in spiritual aspects by its mother. Many children of our church prove how much they are spiritually influenced by their mothers during the pregnancy. Testimonial documents tell us that children born by the grace of God are outstandingly pretty and clever. Many parents say that because they were faithful to the Lord and prayed earnestly during the pregnancy, their children are meek and wise and they grow up very well. You should work hard for God's kingdom and pray continually during your pregnancy. If you stop praying and neglect God's works, giving excuses that you are pregnant and tired, God cannot help you deliver the baby easily and quickly. And I also see their children may have problems while they grow up. God will take care of those children in all their ways because He has already given them His grace since they were in the womb. Thus, your children are healthy in spirit and body and grow wisely when you understand this and raise them in truth with faith. The Bible gives us such examples. Samuel was born by God's grace through his mother's prayer. He could communicate with God since his childhood and became a great prophet in God's sight when he grew up. He was raised with prayer. Because he did not input anything of this world, he could hear God's voice since his childhood. It was the case with John the Baptist too. John the Baptist was controlled by the Holy Spirit since he was a fetus because he was conceived by the work of God. Luke chapter 1 verse 80 says, And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the desert until he appeared publicly to Israel. He didn't have any worldly friends or anything like that. He grew up in the desert. He didn't have any contact with the world, but only prayed. He didn't eat worldly food, but only locusts and wild honey. He prepared the way for the Lord's coming to the world in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Because he grew up with purity without putting in any of the worldly things, he could prepare the way of the Lord. Viewing audiences, we looked into the conception of body and its formation. Then how can thinking power, the most unique characteristics of man, works? It is possible because God gave us ability to remember and think in our brain cells. This topic will be explained in detail when I preach about man's soul later. Now let me just tell you briefly with an example. And computers have memory device to store data. We input data into this memory device to store it and retrieve and use it when necessary. In the same way, men have a very excellent memory system in brain 
unlike animals. Science has now developed and we make computers imitating the memory device of man. Computers cannot function properly or process the command of the user if the computer's hardware has a problem. Similarly, when something goes wrong with man's brain, they cannot carry out the process of remembering, thinking, and judging reasonably. If their brain is damaged in a traffic accident, they might even have a memory blackout. Unborn baby already has the brain during the pregnancy, but cannot store knowledge or utilize it because he has nothing to see and hear. But after the birth, he sees, hears, and feels different things and inputs them one by one in his brain along with feelings. Babies suck on their mother's breast by instinct, even though nobody tells them what milk is or that they can survive by drinking the milk of their mothers. They first look for the breast, and it's same for other animals too. They first look for milk, because they have to drink it to survive. Then when they suck, they suck very strongly because they have to drink the milk. God gave that strength to the baby. They can suck harder than adults. When they suck, the milk comes out very well. By the way, God tells us to be joyful always. Uh, and the fetus is also joyful in the womb. They always rejoice in the womb. Also, it is such an amazing thing that the fetuses are surrounded by water in the womb. In Genesis, we can see the earth was covered with water and God divided the upper and lower water. They are covered with water, so also they rejoice always, even though nobody tells them to do so. They smile all the time. They smile when you look at them. You say, oh, the baby recognizes his mother. Also, when the baby smiles at his father who came home after work, some of you say, oh, she recognizes her father. But God gave the babies this, this instinct so that they smile since the time they are in the womb. They smile when other people look at them. But as worldly things come into them, their pure smiles begin to disappear. Their smile is pure smile without any worries or concerns. But once worldly worries and concerns go into them, this kind of smile begins to disappear and they come to have smiles containing a lot of feelings of this world. We can distinguish what kind of smile one is showing just by looking at the smile. Or we can distinguish what kind of cry it is. Meanwhile, a man's knowledge, characters, tempers are made and judging standards are formed. This procedure explains how yourselves have been formed until now. Everything you see, hear, and store since birth becomes your knowledge and makes you think. So each one has his own thoughts and standards that are different from others because each one's circumstances and education is different and what he sees, hears, and stores in his brain is different. One's friendly action may seem rude to another man, and one's righteous action may appear uneducated to another one. 
Sometimes, some couples get married with burning love, but begin to quarrel from the first day of their marriage because of different habits or emotions. Some couples use separate rooms since the first day. Some pe people make a borderline in the hotel, or some others just go back home during their honeymoon. After they go back, they talk about divorce. Each one's different knowledge and thoughts will be explained in detail later. But there is one thing you should remember today. It is that what you think is right is not always right. It is only the Word of God that is the absolute truth in this world. Many things that you have stored in you as knowledge and righteousness during your growth are not from God but from the world. Therefore, you should not judge others according to your own standards. Still less, you must not judge God's word at all. Let me conclude the message. Viewing audiences, today we learned about the marriage and the conception and birth of our body. In order to understand about man consisting of spirit, soul, and body, we should understand how our visible body is conceived, how it is delivered, and how it grows. So I explained it, although it was a little difficult. What did you feel listening to today's message? I hope you realized how mysterious and priceless a life is. We are all born from the competition of a few hundred millions. You won the competition of 300 million sperms. So you should be proud of yourself and you should have self-confidence. But today, if, have a, if you have a problem, it means there was a problem in the process of your growth. You made yourself somewhat in a wrong way because of your environment or parents. We all make ourselves in a wrong way living in this world. Some of them are raised in a little better way than others. Some people's parents always have quarrels and they learn it. So after they get married, they constantly quarrel too. I saw my parents fighting quite often. When my father was so angry and couldn't control himself anymore, he threw an ashtray too. What do I do then? I was watching it carefully and whether my mother would get hurt or not. And if the quarrel got to the point of throwing something, I would run to my father and ask him, holding his hands, Father, you shouldn't do this. Then how did I make myself? I thought, it's not right. I would never follow this when I get married. How heartbreaking it is to watch it. I would never let my children see this kind of thing. I made up my mind that way since I was young. We should make ourselves in a good way, but some people rebel against their parents because their parents have quarrels with each other. Then they take wrong way, making their characters and everything that way. So you cannot blame anybody. If your circumstances are not good, you can improve yourself through the difficulties. 
It is not always true that you will be made in a good way only if you are in good circumstances. If you are in a good situation, you do not know what difficulty is, so it hinders your growth. It depends on how you input things, how you learn them, and how you make yourself. So you should listen to this spirit, soul, and body lecture on how you made yourself. You should find out what is wrong and change it. That way you can become a man of spirit. We are all born after the going through the competition of a few hundred millions. What an admirable thing a life's birth is when we look at the process of fertilization to growth until delivery. We are here not by coincidence but by the providence of God the Creator. Therefore, Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. And Romans chapter 11 verse 33 says, O oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable His judgments and His paths beyond tracing out. In this session, we just looked into a fragment of what God created. How wonderfully and elaborately God created our body Although it exists for a short time and disappears, still more, He created our soul and spirit. We will look into these aspects in more detail later. When you know God who designed and created all things in the universe, you can firmly believe that God manages life and death and curses and blessings and accomplishes everything as written in the Bible. Then you can live according to the word of God, hoping more eagerly for the eternal kingdom of heaven. I pray in the precious name of the Lord that you reach complete salvation and live a powerful life, meeting and experiencing God all the time by acknowledging God the Creator in all your ways. I will pray for all those who are sick. Place your hand on sick parts and infirmities of your body and receive this prayer. If you are not ill, place your hand on your chest and receive this prayer for the desires of your heart. The work of the Almighty God transcends time and space. He will also work according to your faith. No matter where you are, when you receive this prayer in faith, you will surely experience the astonishing part of God. Hallelujah, the Almighty God of love. Lay your hand on all your children, on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts. Drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorch by the fire of the Holy Spirit and cleanse with the blood of our Lord from head to toe, the five versera and the six entrails each joint and all nerves, tissues, and cells manifest the most high part of creation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria, and weaknesses go away. All contagious diseases go away. All terminal diseases, endemic diseases, and newly discovered diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer, and skin cancer, age, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, 
hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation, may polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated disc be healed and made perfect, may the pain from lumbago, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nervous breakdown and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the most high power of creation, May all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened and may the crippled walk and jump. May the deemed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, bless those who are unable to conceive. Rejoin broken bones and make perfect and whole all burned parts of the body. Cleanse by the fire of the Holy Spirit those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away, and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil and wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging and deceiving spirits be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened, darkness go away. May the light come, Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them the strength to call out to you. Give them the strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life go well with them, answer the desires of their hearts, imploration and prayer. Add faith, hope and love, and may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters, and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. Protect all God's children at home, work, and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children, so that they may give glory to you, whether they eat or drink, or whatever they do in life. Manifest your work, so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God, I have received his answers, and I have received God's blessing. Father God, I thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.
마지막 걱정하지 마요 나를 드리는 순간 아버지의 크신 손이 강하게 붙드시죠 She loves me. 